and welcome to News Click. It's just over two months since the conflict in Gaza began with Israel launching a full-scale attack on the region in response to the 7 October attack by Hamas fighters. The Israel-Hamas conflict has claimed nearly 18,000 lives in Gaza and around 1,150 Israelis have died. Recently, a fresh effort was made at the UN Security Council to pause the conflict on humanitarian grounds, in short, to stop the severe and unprecedented suffering in the Gaza enclave. But the United States of America vetoed this resolution, the only country to do so, while the United Kingdom abstained. Today, we talked to journalist and researcher Abdul Rahman on two months of this conflict and whether there is an end in sight to it. Abdul, thanks very much for joining us today. Now, Abdul, it's just over two months since the Israel-Hamas conflict began. If you look at the statements of the Gaza Health Ministry, they say that the crisis there is unprecedented. The World Food Program says 36% of people in Gaza are now facing severe hunger. Can you, in this context, help our viewers understand why the United States alone voted against a UN security resolution to end this war? Well, Pragya, the, the basic point made by the US uh, relate, uh, related to their veto uh, in the United Nations Security Council on Friday was uh, the resolution which was proposed uh, by UAE and other countries uh, did not uh, condemn Hamas. And that's why uh, they decided to vote against it. But of course, everyone knows that the US has, is a close uh, Israeli ally and it has basically supported uh, Israel throughout its, its history, whatever it does, uh, irrespective of whether what Israel does violates the international law, violates the humanitarian laws, violates the basic principles of international law. Uh, uh, none of these matter, none of that matters when it comes to Israel. And that is the basic reason behind what uh, U.S. did on Friday. They may give diplomatic explanations behind it. They may try to uh, defend their position. But all that thing, of course, rest of the members of the Security Council uh, knew it. And the world community knows that uh, the explanation given by the U.S. does not have any uh, validity. It is basically an attempt to uh, protect Israel and let it allow it to do whatever it is doing. Uh, inside uh, Gaza and the rest of the palace, occupied Palestinian territories. Right, Abdul. Now, Abdul, can you also tell us what else transpired at the time when the UN actually decided to move this draft resolution? It was actually introduced, this was the sixth, if I'm not wrong, uh, proposal, and only one such proposal has been enacted for a short while, and thereafter the war continued. But what's also interesting is that Israel has said that even after the so-called conflict mm -hmm. on its terms is over, the fighting will not stop. So what does this actually exactly. mean? Well, the, the Security Council met. Uh, it was not meeting for a very long time, though you rightly pointed out that they had met five times before the sixth time they met on Friday. But uh, there was a gap since they last adopted in mid-November the resolution asking Israel to kind of... Uh, uh, implement some kind of humanitarian pause, which ultimately led to, after a few days, uh, five days, six days, uh, truce. Uh, of course, completely unrelated to the resolution, it was basically a deal between Israel and Hamas to exchange the hostages. But nonetheless, there was an uh, agreement by all in among all the members of the United Nations Security Council to pass a resolution which uh, did the minimum asking a humanitarian pause in mid-November. Since then, it had not met. And United Nations Secretary General had to invoke uh, Article 99 of the United Nations Charter, which is rarely invoked. Uh, for the record, it was only the fifth time since uh, the formation of the United Nations in 1940s mid, uh, that it was invoked. And uh, <clears throat> so that at least the United Nations Security Council can meet and discuss the uh, the uh, deteriorating situation in Gaza. And on the basis of that only, the uh, Security Council met on Friday and uh, decided to, uh, UAE and other countries decided to propose a, a resolution which was basically asking 
two basic things. The resolution demanded that uh, uh, the, the hostages which are kept by Hamas and other Palestinian resistant movements uh, should be released. And in exchange, there should be a permanent humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, uh, these, uh, according to uh, every uh, logic which we can imply, this was uh, something which was very uh, uh, genuine uh, to demand. And there was nothing more uh, to do at this moment by the Berlin community. Uh, but uh, as I said before, uh, US did not find it uh, satisfactory. Uh, as, an, uh, as we say, it is an excuse, uh, <clears throat> which basically led to a very strong reaction coming from uh, uh, the rest of the permanent members, though uh, UK also abstained, did not vote against it, of course, but abstained on the resolution. But including UK, rest of the countries were quite critical to what uh, US did um, uh, in the Security Council. Uh, some of them, for example, China calling it hypocritical, uh, uh, Russia calling it uh, signing a death warrant uh, for more thousands of more Palestinians, uh, which are going to be killed by the Israelis in the uh, coming days. Uh, uh, other countries, uh, for example, Palestinian representative in the Security Council called it, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, yet another uh, green light uh, uh, for Israeli genocide uh, inside Palestine. So um, uh, if you see the human rights organizations across the world have condemned it, uh, in fact, some of them calling it uh, U.S. complicity uh, uh, in the war crimes, which is it is committing inside Gaza for last uh, more than two months now, uh, uh, because uh, what it did basically basically aids uh, provides kind of support to the, the war crimes uh, of Israelis inside Gaza. So uh, there has been widespread condemnation, but uh, despite all those condemnations, uh, the fact remains that the Palestinians in Gaza and even in other occupied Palestinian territories, for example, in West Bank, continue to face Israeli bombings, indiscriminate Israeli bombings, uh, continue to face ground offensive raids, which basically kills uh, more and more Palestinians every day and destroys more and more homes, destroys all the basic facilities in those territories, of course. So that is all uh, which uh, uh, which we can say about it on, uh, on what happened on Friday. Uh, last Friday uh, on the in the inside the United Nations Security Council. Right, Abdul, you know, what's actually also very important to note is that there are these constant demands to condemn Hamas. And the more condemnation is issued, mm -hmm. it becomes a pretext or a ruse to launch further attacks. So the more people condemn it, the more Israel tends to attack. And I just wanted to, you know, the the numbers of the dead in Gaza is now over 17,700. And of course, the exactly. casualties on the Israeli side are just below uh, 1,200. So is this the reason why, is this one of the, of course, the number of those injured and homeless is completely another uh, at another scale. I think 48,000 are wounded in Gaza. Now, now is, is this the reason why the US is coming in for condemnation itself, even as it demands condemnation of Hamas? I mean, it's a very bitterly ironic situation for the US, but what do the condemnations mean if the conflict continues? Well, uh, uh, as I said before, some of the positions taken by some of the countries uh, uh, on Friday explains what does it mean. It means it means nothing for the Palestinians. Uh, uh, more and more Palestinians are being killed. Uh, the numbers you just quoted, uh, every hour those numbers are revised and hundred, hundreds of more Palestinians are aided uh, 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 into, into that number. And the fact that the most of the Palestinians killed are not even members of Hamas, they cannot be members of any terrorist organization as per the Israeli claims of Hamas being a terrorist, even if the world community at large does not recognize Hamas as a terrorist organization, uh, primarily because most of them are uh, 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 children or women or uh, the elderly person, more than 60 years old, some 70 years old people. Uh, none of them are in a, any position to kind of take up, take up arms against uh, Israel. So this claim of kind of uh, trying to justify, trying to legitimize the war crimes, the genocide of Palestinians, 
in the name of saying that ham what Hamas did or was what Hamas is doing since October 7 is all uh, uh, terrorism and what Israel is doing is basically self-defense is completely baseless. It has no uh, uh, base. It, uh, not only uh, when, uh, uh, as a moral position, in fact, illegally in international law, uh, the acts of Hamas or the act of uh, other Palestinian assistance on October 7 is not recognized as terrorism. It is recognized as the right to resist against the occupation, which uh, uh, and Israel is an occupying power, according to the resolutions which were adopted, which have been adopted by the United Nations Security Council ever since uh, uh, 1967, if not before. And so this these claims uh, uh, that, okay, we have to kind of try to create an equation between what Hamas does or the, what Palestinians do and what Israel is doing is basically a bogus uh, uh, attempt to legitimize uh, uh, the uh, something which is can which cannot be defended which is which has no legal basis which has no moral basis and which is completely uh, 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 you can say uh, uh, you can a uh, 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 guilt which basically uh, the occupation and the powers, particularly the United States, which is backing uh, such kind of massacre of Palestinians, um, is this is a, that guilt which basically uh, reflects in such statements, of course. So there is no uh, mm, uh, logic behind uh, trying to create an equation between Hamas and Israeli uh, acts. Now, Abdul, one of the things that we're hearing a sort of warning about repeatedly mm -hmm. is that the crisis in Gaza will no longer be just just from the attacks by the Israeli forces, but it will be of disease, a health crisis, and of starvation. So in that context, placing it in that context, can you tell us what the situation is right now, how far this conflict has progressed? Well, uh, on Sunday itself, uh, itself uh, the UN agencies have uh, warned that around uh, one third of the Palestinian population in Gaza which is uh, around 2.2 million people uh, divided by three, around seven, eight uh, million people are already living uh, in kind of a very severe food crisis on the level of starvation. Because, and and that, number, that number is basically going to increase in the coming days, primarily because Gaza is dependent completely on imported uh, food grains, imported medicine, imported basic uh, fuel, in fact. Uh, and none of these things are allowed ever since Israel started bombing uh, uh, Gaza. Uh, whatever limited aid which is uh, now pouring in since uh, during, which started during the truce, around 100, 150 trucks a day, uh, that is not enough uh, given the size uh, of the Gaza's population and its dependence on imports. So that, of course, leads to a very severe shortage of basic uh, food, medicine, uh, fuel, and other whatever other basic community. In fact, the drinking water is a major concern uh, because whatever civil infrastructure were there uh, in Gaza, and we should remember, that this is a territory which has been under blockade uh, since 2006. And all of these facilities were limit, uh, operating in a limited capacity even before the war began, this current war began. So given the fact that uh, the, uh, the overall civic infrastructure was really bad before the war started, the war has in fact completely wiped out whatever civil infrastructure, infrastructure was there. That means there is uh, not enough drinking water available for the uh, majority of the Palestinians in Gaza. And whatever the water they're drinking is not safe, of course, which will lead to uh, different kinds of diseases. Already there are reports of thousands of Palestinians uh, facing uh, different kinds of waterborne diseases uh, and other skin diseases, which basically comes because of the lack of water to take bath and so on and so forth. There are also uh, uh, reports of how uh, hospitals are uh, not functioning. Majority of the hospitals all across uh, Gaza are destroyed because of the Israeli not only bombing uh, from the air, but also ground offensive, which it has taken and targeted the hospitals in particular, claiming that those hospitals have been used by Hamas to shield 
to take shelter and so and so forth uh, none of those uh, have uh, ever ever uh, any evidence is provided uh, to substantiate this, those allegations uh, anyway the point is majority of the hospitals are not functioning inside the uh, uh, the territory and whatever hospitals are functioning they are functioning under stress uh, people are operated on the floor they are operated under the uh, mobile uh, lights because most of the hospitals do not have fuel uh, uh, to run their uh, generators to run the power uh, supply uh, their medical equipments are not functioning so uh, the case of uh, uh, the hospital uh, al shifa and other hospitals uh, are there already there in the public domain how the babies uh, had to be shifted from the incubators to egypt on some other countries to, to make uh, to kind of save their lives because the incubators were not able to function because of the lack of power and because of the attack uh, carried out by israel on those hospitals so the fact that the health infrastructure has crumbled medical uh, health uh, workers whatever workers are there uh, which are work, working under the international aid agencies red cross and red crescent and uh, world um, who Uh, all of them have been attacked by israelis the ambulances have been targeted the uh, and the uh, ambulances are not functioning as per the capacity because there is no enough not enough fuel to basically uh, run those ambulances so that the people who are injured uh, under the debris cannot be transported to the hospitals whatever hospitals are there in in some of the cases so all of this basically creates a situation where the health infrastructure has complete completely crumbled uh food supply is limited uh, medical sub- uh, medicines are supplied in a limited way uh, there is no electricity and there is no uh, uh, supply of uh, water and uh, drinking water and even the sanitation is completely uh, destroyed and all of this will of course lead to people are forced to live in open uh, people are forced to live uh, in overcrowded uh, shelter homes which are often attacked by the israelis so all of these of course is gradually leading to a situation where this will be a humanitarian situation which cannot be uh, uh, kind of managed in any way uh, if there is no uh, ceasefire at this moment and uh, and that situation is com- uh, coming uh, any day there can be a complete collapse of whatever limited uh, uh, aid uh, functions or or the attempts to regulate uh, uh, the systems which support the people will collapse any day uh, uh, and therefore there is an immediate need for a ceasefire uh, in gaza abdul what does this situation actually imply in terms of the kind of pressure that can prevail upon israel and upon its friends in the world like the united states and what does it mean for those who support palestine as well where are countries standing today well uh, a la- lot number of company uh, countries sorry uh, trying to uh, provide aid to gaza through there is only one border which is operating which is rafa border across it, uh, through egypt and and that also in a limited way because israelis do not let uh, that border function freely so whenever they allow the trucks to move in the trucks go otherwise the trucks are stranded in uh, in egypt for a longer period of time so though even if the countries uh, uh, try to send re- uh, relief material though that relief material is stranded in egypt for very long period before they actually allow, are allow, allowed in side gaza so uh, the situation in gaza for the countries which trying uh, which are trying to support it uh, of course is not uh, conducive primarily because even if they send uh, the relief material they are not in a no position to uh do it freely because israel controls the borders and it and it is impo- it has imposed a blockade uh, 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 uh the question about its impact on israel or us which is backing the israeli action in gaza uh see ever since uh, uh, after the first week uh, when the uh, israel started bombing on october 7 uh, the humanitarian situation was quite obvious because uh, uh, israel uh, targeted a hospital uh, in the early days of the war uh, which basically led to the killing of more than around 500 people israel completely refused to acknowledge that it bombed in fact it tried to portray that hamas was responsible for it 
and and us backed it so uh, the humanitarian situation is very well known for uh, to israelis but and the us but they they, they be, apart from expressing concern uh, the us about uh, the growing humanitarian situation in gaza they have not done anything concrete to resolve it even the aid supply which is now allowed is not because israeli wanted to do it it was basically a, a compromise between the us and the israel as a space saving mechanism to basically allow, let uh, some kind of aid flow in so that their attempts to kind of defend their act has greater legitimacy that they are not uh, actually targeting the civilians and the civilian casualties or the uh, their humanitarian situation is basically a collateral damage and so and so forth but uh, if you see the israeli politics domestic politics even those 100 trucks every day uh, one should remember that uh, before the war started every day minimum of 500 trucks used to pass uh, different borders into gaza to basically provide the basic amenities uh, services food and so on uh, of uh, for 2.2 million uh, palestinians there um, as i said before they are heavily dependent on imports after the war uh, for almost for, for one and a half month very few uh, number of trucks passed uh, inside uh, gaza because israel imposed blockade and the fact they knew the impact of it did not stop them from implementing that for or even after uh, the truce was broken off uh, early uh, this month the point i'm trying to make it uh, make is within the domestic israeli politics there is a resistance to uh, this limited concession uh, of uh, uh, aid flowing in inside gaza and they claim the uh, the uh, the israeli politicians claim that this uh, 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 aid will be used by hamas to basically strengthen themselves and to kind of gain legitimacy and so on and so forth so we should not allow any aid to flow in a uh, flow inside gaza so israelis are not bothered about it in fact they want to make it much more uh, worse for the palestinians because they think that may ultimately lead to achieving their whatever is the status goal to of course one what we what sorry what palestinians uh, say that this is an attempt to force palestinian out of gaza because if we make the situation desperate they will not they have no other option but to move out uh, from that territory and that basically is the stated objective of uh, israel and from the israeli point of view it it will kind of create a, a kind of legitimacy crisis for the hamas because hamas will be held responsible by the uh, palestinian for failure of kind of or, or putting for putting them into this kind of situation uh, so there is a political calculation behind not allowing aid uh, enough aid uh, to gaza uh, by the israelis and therefore they do not have uh, it the humanitarian situation unfolding hardly has any impact on the uh, israel uh, on israel yeah that is why that is where we can understand the statements by some israeli officials that well you know even after two months even if the war ends after two months the attacks will continue. Mm. exactly that's exactly the logic behind it uh, in fact uh, uh, one should remember uh, if you what uh, uh, the statements made by the israeli defense minister in the early weeks of the when the war started that we are dealing with uh, human animals uh, inside gaza and they will be treated as such so uh, when you basically dehumanize palestinians uh, when you think that uh, uh, putting palestinians in, in a particular condition where they become desperate to kind of uh, go against their own uh, uh, leadership uh it basically is the strategy to kind of deal with uh, the uh, whatever problems they uh, identify uh, in, uh, in 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 gaza uh, one one will be clear about uh, the overall uh, situation uh, overall orientation with which the israelis are operating uh, inside palestine or inside gaza it sounds like a very bleak situation but also a situation which doesn't have an immediate end in sight is that what people are saying people whose reports you are, you we are all reading and is that the general opinion today that 
This is a conflict which whose end we cannot see yet. One is looking at what is happening in Gaza uh, 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 and kind of reducing it uh, to the events uh, uh, related to October 7 and onwards. Uh, of course, uh, there will always be a kind of a, a hope that, okay, uh, once Hamas is, quote-unquote, uh, eliminated, uh, there will be some kind of peace. Uh, in fact, some of them have argued in public domain that, and comparing it with uh, other situations in the world that where the, quote-unquote, terrorist organizations were eliminated and hence, though during the process, some people died, but ultimately it leads to peace. This this is a very myopic vision uh, to uh, what is happening in Gaza. Uh, of course, what happened on October 7th has a context, as we earlier talked about it, that the, it is a, the context is the occupation of Palestine by the Israelis. If not from 1948, at least from 1967, when uh, uh, Gaza, West Bank, East Jerusalem, were captured by the Israelis, and uh, uh, and these are the occupied territories. And uh, until that occupation remains in uh, in force, uh, uh, remains a reality, the Palestinians, in one way or another, will always resist it. They have been resisting since 1967. And Israel will always try to uh, uh, put portray that resistance as terrorism or something, a threat to its existence and so on and so forth. And therefore, this cycle will continue. So if one is really worried about the peace in, uh, uh, in Palestine, the only solution is that there uh, an independent Palestinian state uh, or, the, in other words, end of occupation. Until Israel is ready to acknowledge uh, that fact, there is no peace in the region, even if there, what, what Israelis are saying, of course, they are not very willing to uh, accept this uh, particular fact, acknowledge this particular fact, and therefore they are ready to live with it. That's what the statement uh, means when they say, even if there is a uh, end of uh, the current level of hostilities, uh, aggression uh, after two months, uh, there, that will not be the end against, uh, uh, end of uh, the operations inside uh, Gaza, they are basically not ready for peace at the moment. And uh, because the, uh, uh, that would mean they have to acknowledge the Palestinian right to self-determination. They have to acknowledge their occupation, the illegitimacy of it. They have to withdraw the settlements from the inside West Bank. They have to withdraw all kind of border controls which they have imposed on Gaza. They have to withdraw from East Jerusalem. They have to, and there are other issues which, even which have even much more uh, complex history. So until that history is resolved, uh, one should not uh, expect, even if Israel does not want it, uh, even if Israel wants uh, to kind of create a, a end of hostility, uh, there will be no end of uh, a war in that reason. There will be no peace until there is, an, there is an independent Palestinian state. And one should remember that when one is talking about uh, uh, the uh, end of the current uh, uh, war or end of the killing of the Palestinian citizens, because that did not start on October 7th, and that will not uh, uh, end after two months until there is an independent Palestinian state. All right, Abdul, thanks very much for joining us once again.